In this question, two long parallel wires in the YZ plane at a distance 2A apart carry a steady current I in opposite directions as on this diagram. <clears throat> Midway between the wires is a rectangular loop of wire 2B cross D. So 2B is this side and D is this side, carrying current I as on the figure. The loop is free to rotate about z-axis, so it will rotate about this z-axis and the current remain fixed to y irrespective of the relative motion between the loop and the wire. So all the currents remain equal to y. Obtain the top tending to rotate the rectangular loop about its axis as a function of uh, this angle phi. Okay, Here phi is the angle that the plane of loop makes with the plane of wires. Okay, Obtain the value of phi for which the torque is maximum. So let's solve this question. Let's go to the next page. On the next page, I've shown some points PQRS related to these loops. And if I look at this loop from the top, this is the top view. And in the top view, we can see this wire like just a point. So in this wire, the current is coming towards us. Okay, if, I, if I'm looking from here, so current is coming towards me. Okay, so it is out of this plane. And this current is into the plane because it is downward. So these are the two currents and current in this QR wire, I can show it like this. Okay, so current in this QR is like this. And this is that angle phi. In this diagram, I'm showing some distances uh, for this wire. The distance of uh, this point is R1 and distance of this point is let's say R2. And from symmetry, uh, distance from this wire is R2 and distance is uh, this R1. And I'm showing a circle because this tip will move along this circle. So it's better to show with circle. So now one by one, let us take all the wires and calculate the forces and torques. So I'm picking this QR wire and whatever happened with QR wire will happen with the PS wire also. So let's first take this QR wire. So if I take this QR wire, so on this QR wire, I'm calculating force due to this one. And due to this wire, the magnetic field will be like uh, circular lines anti-clockwise because this current is coming out of the plane. So if I draw R vector, I'm taking any point on this wire and I'm drawing this R vector. So this is the R vector and magnetic field is like this. Tangential, these are forming the circular lines like this. So this is the magnetic field. This is the DL vector and force is I DL cross B. This is the ampere and force. And this ampere's force is given by DL cross B and DL cross B, DL and B, both the vectors are in this plane of the diagram. DL is in this plane and magnetic field is also in this plane. So both the vectors are in this plane only. So their cross product DL cross B will be perpendicular to this plane. And if it is perpendicular to this plane, so it will be perpendicular to both DL and B and it will be along the y-axis. Okay, so we can see this from the cross product direction. It is uh, DL cross B it is along the positive Z direction. Okay, so if DL cross B is along positive Z direction or along the Z-axis, then force is along the Z-axis. And if a force is parallel to the axis of rotation, then that force is not going to produce any torque. So torque due to force which is parallel to this axis will be zero. Okay, so there is no torque produced. So similarly, I can say for this wire PS also, the torque is zero and the same thing will go for this wire also. So for both the wires, there is no torque produced. So I'm not going to calculate the net force. So there is no meaning of that because I want to find a torque. So there is no torque produced due to forces on these wires, QR and PS. So now let's go for this PQ and RS wire. Okay, in the next diagram, suppose I'm calculating force due to this on PQ wire. So Due to this, magnetic field will be, so this is R vector and magnetic field will be like this. So I'm showing magnetic field in, in this diagram also and in this diagram also the same thing I've shown. So this is uh, the point I've taken and this is the R vector for this point and this is the magnetic field. Magnetic field forms circular loops anti-clockwise like this. Okay, So this will form circular loops like this. So this is the magnetic field direction. Magnetic field will be in this plane. Okay, So in this plane, you can say magnetic field and the DL vector will be out of this plane. Okay, it, it is coming towards me. So in this diagram, it is like this. So DL vector is up, magnetic field is like this. And if you find the force, so force will be perpendicular to both DL and B. So DL and B both are mutually perpendicular. So force. Now you can say that this R vector and magnetic field is perpendicular. 
So R vector, magnetic field, and DL vector, the current direction, are mutually perpendicular. So DL cross B will be along this direction. DL cross B will be along this direction. These three directions are mutually perpendicular. Direction magnetic field, this R vector direction, and uh, the DL vector direction, which is perpendicular to this complete plane. So force will be along this, and you can see from here, from DL cross B, if you calculate DL cross B using cross product, so DL cross B will be in this direction. So this is the direction of force. So I'm showing all the forces now. Uh, for the sample calculation, I've calculated the direction of force due to this wire only on this wire PQ, okay? So if I repeat this calculation for all the wires, for this wire, for this wire, okay? This is the wire RS. So for this wire on wire RS and for this wire on this wire PQ and on this wire RS, so I will get the direction of forces. So this F1 is the force due to this wire on PQ and F2 is the force due to this wire number two on PQ. So this will be the force. If you find magnetic field due to this wire here, so magnetic field will be like this. So this is a magnetic field clockwise sense and DL vector will be up. So if you find DL cross B will be like this. It is along also R. It is along the R2 direction. Okay, so R2 is the distance between this and this. Okay. So this F2 is along this R2. This F1 is along this R1. Similarly, for this wire RS. So due to this wire, the force is along this F1. Like this wire, what is what this wire is doing with this wire? Okay, the same thing is this wire is doing with this wire. So this is F1 along this and this is F2. F2 is due to this wire on this wire. It is like this. All the forces are along these R vectors, okay, along these R vectors from the wire. So now we have two force couples. This force F1 and this force F2 is making a force couple, okay. And this F2 and this F1 is making a force couple. So due to these two pairs of force couple, I can find a torque using the force multiplied by the distance between them. So if I write F1, so F1 will be equal to the magnetic field. Okay, there is no issue of uh, calculation of force. Force can be calculated very easily. Magnetic field at each point will be same because all these distances are same. So magnetic field direction wise, it is it may be different direction wise, it is also looking same. So magnetic field is same and uh, force is simply ideal cross B. So I is this one and DL cross B everywhere angle is 90 degree. So there is no issue. So force you can find simply mu naught I divided by 2 pi r1 this is the magnetic field r1 is uh, this distance okay which is shown in this diagram also and in this diagram also so r1 is the mag uh, mu naught i upon 2 pi r1 this is the magnetic field and this is the current in the wire in which we have to find the magnetic force and this is the length of that wire so it is mu naught i square d divided by 2 pi r1 similarly i can write for f2 in f2 it will be r2 now I need to find the distance between the two parallel line of actions. These two parallel line of actions F and F2 and these two parallel line of actions F and F2, okay? So for that, some geometry you have to see. So let's see some geometries now. Okay, so I've drawn a circle like this and from this, the distance is R1 and this distance is the radius, this is B and this is A. I have some all the distances. And from the center, I am doing drawing, dropping a perpendicular. This is a sine theta. Similar perpendicular will be on that uh, parallel line of actions. So the total distance will become two a sine theta for the torque calculation. So now I have to relate some data using geometry. So you can write sine rule here: r1 upon sine phi in this triangle. r1 upon sine phi. This is uh, b upon sine theta. And I can write sine theta because uh, why I need sine theta because this perpendicular distance is a sine theta. So sine theta is equal to this. Now I can find the distance R1 because in this expressions I need this distance R1, R2. So I can use this cos rule of the triangle. So cos phi, cos phi is a square plus b square minus R1 square divided by 2ab. So from here I can write R1 square. So this is the value of R1 square. Similarly, I can do for R2 also, R2 is this total distance. 
and here the perpendicular distance because uh, other line of actions are something like this okay so if you see in the work diagram the other line of actions are something like this so i have to draw perpendicular like this okay so now let's come to this diagram so this is the perpendicular and this perpendicular distance if this angle is alpha so this perpendicular distance is going to be a sin alpha and uh, here the angle was phi and this angle will become pi minus phi so only the difference is angle is pi minus phi here so you can write sin rule again and you can find sin alpha so only difference is we have pi minus phi and for r1 it is r2 r2 you can again calculate it will be plus here it will be minus here because it is pi minus phi cos pi minus phi is minus cos phi now torque so what is the value of torque so, torque is equal to so one is uh, this force multiplied by the distance okay and other is due to r2 multiplied by this distance so distance is 2 sin theta because one is a sin theta other will be a sin theta so distance will be total distance will be 2 a sin theta so 2 a sin theta and 2 is 2 a sin phi now just a matter of calculations so let's uh, go for calculations so now you can take something common here and you can put sin theta and sin alpha from here okay from these relations so if you put sin theta and sin alpha so you will get r1 square r2 square all the things common will be taken out so r1 r2 you can put these values if you put these values and just calculate so you will get this answer so this answer will come and if you manipulate cos square phi as 1 minus sin square phi so you can arrange the answer like this okay so this is the final answer of torque now for what value of phi we will have maximum torque so this torque expression you can just differentiate and put it equal to zero if you differentiate and put it equal to zero so sine phi will be like this okay so if you interpret this result so suppose this uh, sine beta is equal to i'm defining equal to this so this uh, location this q when q is like this 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 okay so we can have four type of location for maximum torque all the locations are equivalent in case of torque okay so torque will be same in all these locations and maximum torque will be acting so this angle is beta so for this you can write beta because you are measuring phi like this and for, for this it will be pi minus beta and if you go like this so it will be minus beta and for this you are going pi and plus beta okay so it is pi plus beta so in this way these four locations are possible in this there is maximum torque so that's it for it.